Welcome again. Uh, my name is Joe Harrison with Washington State University, and I have with me today Andy Workhoven. And John um, is uh, son in law. They're going to visit with us about their efforts to clean out an anaerobic digester. The um, way we're going to handle this today is we've got um, a set of questions that I'm going to pose to Andy, and then he and John are going to provide a description of their process in working with this anaerobic digester and cleaning it out and then retooling it uh, for reuse. So uh, welcome, Andy. Um, and let me see, I guess I need to share some slides, don't I? So is that uh, looking OK? I see it. OK. It looks great. All right, thanks. So um, we'll go ahead and move on to the second slide here. Um, so Andy, can you give us a little bit of an idea how the, you first considered um, using an anaerobic digester and, and kind of who were the partners? Well, we started, um, we built our digester in an 08, but uh, the process of building it probably started four or probably at least four years prior to that. And it was working with the Tulalip tribes of, uh, who are a Native American tribe just uh, downstream from us who have been very good neighbors to us and we've just in essence had the ability to do a project with them it was they were of interest in clean water and uh, we we're of interest in being good neighbors and and keeping clean water uh, so it's something we looked at together now uh, this is kind of what was born out of it so we built a nonprofit company we call coalco that owns and manages the digester and our dairy obviously supplies it. Okay. Um, so in terms of reasons for actually um, having an anaerobic digester, can you talk a little bit about that? Well, the big reason was, uh, you know, we were interested in the clean water that that's for, for Tulalip that was their main driver you know whether we made power or whatever we did with it that wasn't uh that wasn't that big a deal to us but we wanted to be able to process our manure uh the pathogen kill was very important to us and uh and then being able to handle our nutrients in a very uh you know specific way that you know, anything we can do to handle our nutrients more appropriately is a value in our area. So that those were the big drivers. Um, electricity is a byproduct of it, which has turned out to be good. And uh, I think just uh, striving to become carbon neutral is a very worthwhile thing today, but that wasn't the driver that got us going. So um, I think that that's the big picture item though was clean water. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about the, the project site and um, where manure is coming from. Um, and then also, um, you know, obviously anything that's blue here is water. So um, again, brings back that point of trying to keep clean water. So I understand this was originally thought to be a community anaerobic digester. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, like I said, we started our discussions originally started in in 04 and there was excitement and there was more dairymen around then and uh the the crisis of 08 came along and uh, we lost dairymen um our, our dairy happened to buy up one of the existing dairies that was a potential that you see at the bottom dairy farm one that is a second dairy now that we own it, that pumps into it but uh it, it was just a very, very difficult timing. And uh, so I was very understanding of why the other dairymen were unwilling to stick their necks out. And it was, it was not an easy decision just based on the economics of that time. It was the third digester built in our state. It was not, um, this wasn't like a really well 
proven that this is economically viable. And that, and that was our goal to make it economically viable. And we're committed to that. And that's how we set up their business and plan completely so that it is sustainable. And I think having economics as part of sustainable is, is part of the definition of sustainable. So that's, that's how the fallout in the farms happened. So I understand that a part of that uh, business plan was to bring in uh, pre-consumer food waste and you're allowed to bring in up to 30% of your total material through the digesters, pre-consumer food waste. And what are those that you currently run through the digester? Um, yeah, that is accurate, Joe. And that wasn't uh, the way we started though, as being the, uh, that, you know, that we'd have food waste with it, but it, it soon came on. Uh, the, the, the waste streams that we use are typically um, blood from a, a, a slaughterhouse. Um, we get a lot of um, what I would just call from behind the grocery store, behind the, your average Costco, uh, the produce section there that's been all ground and pre-digested. Um, we also get some past poll date uh, liquor. Um, it, it varies at times. And then also uh, we'll get grease trap. That's, and we try to limit the quantity of grease trap because it's harder to digest. But that is a, that's actually a, a product that I think is a, it's a problem for municipal sewers. It's a problem for, uh, to deal with. Uh, and we can deal with a proportion of it. It's, it's actually a service that I think that we can, can bring to the community and be able to do that. Cause it, I know it's uh, not an easy product for a lot of them to deal with. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the, the actual site itself. Um, you wanna kind of describe how things are laid out here and I'll move the pointer for you. Yeah, um, well, First of all, the site was kind of interesting because it originally belonged, it was the state prison dairy. And uh, the state got behind us. Well, we asked them about it at the beginning, would they be uh, willing to support anaerobic digestion and uh, creating power and actually getting farmers and tribes working together. And uh, they were very interested in helping and anything that could get farmers and tribes working on the same page um was of great interest to them so we took over that old state honor farm site the digester is right beneath that big barn and you can see in the photo there and that uh that's where we constructed uh, the rest of the buildings to your right are mostly derelict uh but there was one building there that where we have the composters listed that's where we hold all of our solids uh, post-digestion. Um, the lagoons were in excellent shape. The state had just uh, done a bunch of work on them and had significant investment in all the, the lagoon system. So that was a really uh, a great asset. And probably the biggest asset of all is it was located, the, the in general location, it happens to be kind of right plunk in the middle between the dairies. So. Uh, we were able to pipe everything to this location, uh, a mile and a half from our home dairy and another mile and a half from the, the opposite direction from the People Creek dairy. So the logistics of it worked very well. And also the, the logistics of uh, pumping the effluent out, out of the lagoons works well because we were able to just interconnect the existing pipeline systems and add a few more and uh, actually get a very large footprint that you could uh, pump effluent via pipes underground, which in my opinion is by far the safest and most efficient way of dealing with it. Uh, no breaks, no, uh, no, no worries of spills and that kind of thing. So how long had, had the anaerobic digester been in a running before you realized there was a need for having to clean it out? Um, hindsight probably tells us the need was quicker than we thought. We ran it from 08 to, I believe it was 19, I said, when we cleaned it. Uh, 
uh, I think 11 years, but probably the last two to three years, we just noticed uh, gas production was just, was a little more off, a little more finicky, but I, I'm scared that it's, it's a little bit like a bad heart. It can just sneak up on you and it's not a defined moment that you go, oh, it's bad. And uh, in our modified plug flow digester, there's limited spots where you could probe it. And that's kind of your real determiner of that. Do you think you have a buildup? Well, you, you literally could take a, a probe pipe and go right, right through the sludge and not even feel it. Uh, I think there was sludge there that we didn't recognize was there. Um, made that super hard to know. So that's, that's, that's the driver behind it. You just didn't know. Uh, you just seen slowly decreasing uh, you know, quantities of gas. But when you seen how plugged up it was, we were stunned that it worked as good as it did. So let's go ahead and uh, show a few slides and begin talking through the process of the clean out. So this first slide um, here has, uh, as we discussed earlier, the removing of insul insulation that was on top. Want to share with us a little bit about that? Yeah, so this, this is a GHD uh, modified plug flow. So they're insulated on the exterior. And yeah, that was the first big thing was to, you had to remove all the foam so that you could expose the concrete panels to, to remove them. And uh, we got little dingoes up there, which worked quite well actually to, you know, stand behind machine and that you could walk and scrape it. And we had dumpsters after dumpsters pull up and uh, we loaded them. It's not a good windy day job. And uh, we actually skirted the whole digester with plastic so that we could keep the stuff rounded up and uh, filled the dumpsters. So that, that was step one. And then and you long, could actually- How long did that take? Uh, that, was, that was several days worth of just scratching and cleaning just to get exposed. And then I, I don't know what your next slide shows, but the, the, yeah, there we are with our roof removed. But the first step in removing the roof is you have to have saw cuts and you have to cut all the outer edges where the mortar lines are and between all the panels uh, because it's made out of three foot wide uh, bridge panels. And then after you do the saw cuts, you had to jackhammer the mortar loose and, and then pick the panels with an excavator. So we had to rem move, yeah, there you are picking a panel. We removed them one at a time we kept the digester plumb full while we did this so it would be in a safe state to work. Um, you could literally have stepped on that crust and walked on it and uh, it wasn't a problem that way. You know, and if you dropped anything on it, chunks of concrete, you could clean them off. So I think that was a really important tip to keep the thing literally overfilled it. We filled it as full as we could get it just to keep it safe. And the amount of time for doing the saw cutting, um, do I understand that was a better part of a week just for that? Oh, at least a week worth of saw cutting and uh, and hammering. Yeah, that was a big job. And then lifting the panels, a few more days. That was that was a couple days. And it took a large excavator. That machine in that photo was, uh, I think that's a 35 ton machine. It's not a, wasn't a small one. And and it's, it's a little bit of a beast of a job. It was, you know, to grab those panels and pick them off. And then you had to jackhammer holes through each single, uh, through each one to get the chain through. So each panel represents at least four holes of jackhammering and then uh, strapping chains around and removing it. And then what did you do with the top panels when you removed them? Were they recycled? Yeah, we recycled them. We, we ended up, uh, breaking them up right away and taking uh, the cables out of them because they're pre-stressed panels. They have cable in them and then busting the uh, concrete all up. When we were all finished, we actually had the concrete ground. But um, so we had big dumpsters there collecting cable and steel and then created a concrete pile. 
Okay, so this is a picture of the actual clean out process. You want to describe a little bit about what occurred here? Yeah, so you can see what looked plum full before. That's after you suck the liquid out, it drops down. This was the tail end of the digester. So it's uh, um, it was the part that was the cleanest and pumped down the cleanest. And we were able to get a, a skid steer down inside. Um, the solids on that side probably went from eight feet thick and on one end down to at the most shallow part, only a couple feet thick, but we were able to scoop and get, get started. And then, and then in essence, what you did is you tried to take the real solid stuff and what you couldn't pump because it was just too much slurry, you would blend it in with the solids to get it out. Um, and that was, you know, this is sort of what it looked like on day one of scooping. So my understanding is the manure flows in this right hand side around this end panel here and then back up this way. Is that correct? That you got that exactly right, Joe. Okay. And then this wall here is that that's actually, it, it's a little bit tricky to see in the picture, but you, you those are plastic panels that, uh, are that wall that are attached two feet away from that cement concrete wall and all the heat exchange units and the gas exchangers are behind that. Um, they were pretty much stuffed with solids and around the heat exchangers. Um, and actually that was one of the big symptoms. Heating was tough. There you go. That's, that's the, the first heat exchanger coming in. You can see how the sludge had just packed right up against them. That's at the very beginning of the digester in its worst spot. But it, so heat exchange, that's what, that was one of the big things that you noticed. It just, it wasn't warming the way it was supposed to. Um, the gas line in the bottom of the thing had failed in a few areas and sludge had entered and, and corrosion had gone on. So you can see how plugged up they were. So these pipes were all removed and replaced with a, a polyurethane, uh, a high, a thermal type polyurethane can handle the heat and the gas and uh, they blow through the duct bills for agitation. So these black uh, attachments here are the duct bills? That... Yeah, yeah. So those were all removed and uh, the water lines that were above them were actually in good shape and that they weren't a problem, but the, the it's the bottom line that was a gas line that uh, was a problem. Okay, so when you got into re-engineering, you wanted to look at doing this a little bit differently. Yeah, so and John can chime in here so I don't miss anything. So basically we went and looked at a, a handful of failed uh, digesters and, and we had seen where they, where they had foamed on the interior the concrete was in excellent shape yet. So um, that's where we found that it was really worthwhile for us to, uh, oh, here, I'm gonna get interrupted by a neighbor man that <laughs> right now, but that's okay, I'm sorry. But the foam roofs had failed on the interior where it had corroded through. And so we thought we had to save that from the underside. And uh, we did all of our work that way by what was on the exterior of the thing, we put it on the interior. Um, the exterior, we actually put a silicone seal over top of it to keep moisture out. Um, we went with a thicker roof that could handle uh, higher stress loads. Um, you know, we, we re redid all the calculations on water columns and the stress load that uh, it can handle. And we went with a tougher, stronger roof. Um, after that, we, uh, yeah, I think that's in essence that we, we put a bunch of access ports through that roof also, and that we put windows in. Not only are they access, but you can, you can see and know what's going on inside that digester. And that has been a huge asset to have them in there. Um, there's cross vents in the digester from one side to the other, uh, eight inch cross vent holes that are allowed the gas. 
those holes had all been plugged from foaming events or different things like that. We took every one of those and uh, put a water wash out down into them so that we could keep them clean. And we think that was a nice little addition. Um, and then we redid all the, uh, the research pipe on the bottom, the three inch duckbill pipes. So that's, that's in essence what I did it. That's a good photo of where you can see installing the new panels. You just lay on top of there and before you do the cement work, all the cement mortar work in between them. And uh, you have the holes cut in there. These are for the viewing panels? Yep. There, and that's actually a very good photo of where you can see the inside of the whole digester. Uh, it's, uh, you can see the, how the ceiling is foamed up and, uh, and sealed in, ready to go. Um, we redid all the, the gas lines in there on the sides, on the bottom, and uh, it's clean and ready to go. You can see the light coming into the build, into there. That's some of the windows. And actually up in the right, if you point it out, Joe, can you see the little cross hole? Yeah, right there. There's one of those about every 50 feet. They don't all show, but those holes are vitally important to allow the gas to move. Um, there's the new ure, uh, polyurethane pipe the underneath, which we think is gonna hold up a lot better. And uh, that, yeah, it was all, pre-test and pressure tested. There's the exterior with the silicone line, uh, silicone roof on it. And uh, the pallet board is sitting where the, now there's a window. Um, I guess the other thing that we added on the top too that's new is we put, we doubled the amount of ports where we can get the gas out. So the gas, you can, it gives you the ability to plumbing wise to clean filters and never stop. You know, you can, you shut one down and clean another one out. Plus it gives you the added advantage of always having uh, uh, easy access for gas to remove because gas is what will destroy the thing. And if there's ever a plug or anything that's the foam event or something like that, you want it to be able to get to it and get it out so it doesn't destroy your lid. Yeah, so there you go with putting Talk a little bit the, about the flame arresters. Um, that's that's that we put the two flame arresters, yeah, at, in, a, in a third emergency vent. Those were your they all go to the off to the flare or to the engine, and uh, they're spread out across the whole digester so that you know they're not right next to each other, so that again you have more opportunity to vent the thing in case of any kind of problem. Um, and you can see we've, with a, with a heavier roof, we were able to handle a higher water column, and stronger, it's just stronger and with less fear. That tower in the background, that's our uh, shroud over our flare. And you can see the two, the two flare, uh, the flame arresters that come out from the digester itself. So we think so far it was a really good remodel. Yeah, that's why you don't want to do it again. It was a dirt, big, bad, dirty job. Uh, that was uh, one of the guys uh, on a typical day of cleaning it out. It was a miserable thing to clean. It was just a dirty job. Um, Lessons learned to not do it again. Um, we changed a little bit how our intake pit um, is. We, instead of pumping off the bottom, we pump off the surface and we quarterly clean it out so that any grit or sand is stopped and uh, from coming in. And then uh, we try to keep any undigestible material from getting in there. And what we mean by that is we've just tried we have sand bedded dairies. We've even upped our ante on how well we look at making certain sand doesn't become part of the, the problem. Um, you know, I said on there, sand doesn't seem to be the whole issue with the buildup. 
it's some of the issue, but it's not the whole issue. Uh, you know, that grit was just undigested fiber also. So that is, uh, that, that was part of it. It's just, we, we think that some of it might look like, uh, if, if you look at uh, corn stalk, that little inner piece that's gone through a cow, um, some of that, that ends up being like a really undigestible type of grit that they'll just sit there. Um, we would like, we set it up that we hope that next time we just have to remove pan, the, the panels off the ends of the digester and we can have access to, to the whole thing by doing that. And uh, I think to do it more frequently is the key. If you had two digesters, which would be ideal, you'd pump one down and keep it running, the other running, and you would, you'd literally suck it down and you'd go in there and you'd scrape it out and away you go. But uh, that's, that's what you know in perfect world, the redundancy of have a second digester would be wonderful. Okay. Thanks, Andy.